What's up guys, this is Coop, and today I have something out of the ordinary for you. Something that I get a lot of questions on, and it relates to this. People say, Coop, can you talk more about your rack? Coop, you've got the biggest rack I've ever seen on Instagram. Coop, I'd like to fondle your rack. Okay, I've never been told that. Please don't DM me. But people ask about this beautiful rack in the background. We recently did a giveaway, and this was in it. We recently have 100,000 Instagram followers, thanks to you, and this was in the background. We actually hit 100,000 twice, by the way, but that's a different story. But we have all these barbells. And I get asked, Coop, do you use all these barbells? Well, yes and no. Some of them I use more often than others, and also, these aren't necessary. So before you pop off in the comments, that's completely unnecessary. I know, it is completely unnecessary. This entire garage is completely unnecessary. So is just weightlifting equipment in general. So I don't have these out of necessity. I have these because I compare and contrast them, because I review them, because I am the garage gym review guy. And if I'm the garage gym review guy, I gotta have the equipment to review. Okay, so this is a wide variety of barbells. These aren't all the barbells I have. I have probably maybe 20 to 30 more uh, at my gym and then other places. Uh, humble brag there. Um, but I'm gonna go through these bars. I'm gonna tell you about them, which ones I like, which ones I think are worth getting, which ones I use the most, which ones I don't like, as well as some other things. So let's get started. <laughs> We'll start at the top and the one at the very top and you're probably asking how the freak do you get those this is how i get them and i'm only going to do this once but this is how i get them it's a ladder okay this bad boy is made to hold a lot of weight i have no idea well i could factor it in for you i've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen and they all average about 45 pounds so 17 times 45 is I'm not very sure. Lynn, do you know what 17 times 45 is? No idea. I don't either. Let's ask Echo. Echo, what is 17 times 45? 765 pounds, okay? So there is 765 pounds on here. These things are strong. These studs are strong. These are actually made by Titan. Um, they're plastic lined. I like that they you know, fondle the uh, barbell knurling really well. And um, yeah, so it can hold all that weight, plus my, I don't know, 350 or so pounds. I'm 185. So you climb to the top, <laughs> you grab it with one hand, okay? This, I practiced this, I don't know. Rip, Mark Ripito actually has a tutorial on this on starting strength, so you can check it out. So one arm, pull it off, and then I typically put it on my shoulder, come down one, and then come down. I'm only gonna do that to this one. So this bar is actually a very unique bar. This is one that we restored. Um, it's completely bare metal, okay? So it has no cutting, coating, none at all. Basically, it's just raw metal. The sleeves still spin, so they have bronze bushings. They self-oil, just gotta give it a little turn. So this is one that we restored from, basically, it was all rust. The unique thing about this, though, is this is one of the original Texas Power Bars by Mac Barbell. I'm not gonna go into the whole story, but basically Mac Barbell and Buddy Caps used to work together. Buddy Caps helped create the Texas Power Bar for Mac Barbell. He then split off, said, it's my own, decided to create his own. Mac Barbell still sold theirs, but this is from the time when Buddy Caps worked for Texas Power Bar, or worked for Mac Barbell, okay? This is the unique part. This bar has never been used, okay? This was literally put in the back of a shed in the 80s, left there to die, I rescued it, I brought it up, I raised it, I fed it with lots of oil and brushed it, and now it's beautiful, okay? So it has this nice patina. At, I said it's never been used. Look, this knurling is as sharp as it was on day one. There's still some metal filings on here, okay? So this is a very special barbell. I don't use it. I never plan to use it. I put it at the top because it's like a shining example of you can never be too far away to have glory, okay? So you can never be too rusty to be a champion. You can never fall too far to be lifted back up. That's why I put it up there. Actually, I put it up there just because to get it out of the way. Okay, so great barbell. I really enjoy it. Not only is great, um, and it's never touched a rack. If it touched a rack, this part right here that would be on the J-Cups would be, be worn down. 
Nobody touches this, only me. Lynn, don't touch this. Get away. Uh, the bar that's right below that is the now Texas Power Bar. This is the Buddy Caps Texas Bar. This is their newest model, which is very similar to the older model. It's 190K tensile strength. A very strong bar, very good bar, a bar that many people say is better than this one right here that I'll talk about in a moment. I don't think it's better than it. I think it's good. I think it's an excellent bar for those that power lift. Actually, there's probably more records put on that barbell than any other barbell in the world, um, which is pretty cool. I'm talking specifically powerlifting. Uh, it's a great bar, it's still made in the US. It's a good price. Neuralink's great. I think it's a little bit sharper than I traditionally like, but overall, great bar. Buddy Caps, great person, great company. I like everything about them in that bar. So I may be biased, but I like them. The one below that, and I'm doing these without looking at the end caps, so this is pretty special. I know these that well. The one below that is the American Barbell Training Bar. Um, that was one of the first bars we ever reviewed on garagegymreviews.com. Plug, go check it out. Um, it's a good CrossFit type barbell, works really well, has no center knurling, um, has composite bushings. It was a bar I said was the Rogue 2.0 bar killer. I'll put a link in the bio so you can check out that review. Uh, is it as good as the Rogue Bar 2.0? Yeah. Is it more expensive? Yeah. So do I still recommend the Rogue 2.0? Probably. They're very similar though. Great bar. The one below that is, oh, I don't want to look. This is the Fringe Sport Lone Star Bar. Okay, Fringe Sport traditionally imports products. This one is actually made in the US, has a pretty deep knurling. It's actually a volcano knurling. I think what they did was they saw the success of this bad boy right here tried to copy the knurling. It's not quite as good, but it's still very good. It has a high tensile strength, I believe around 205. Um, or bronze bushings, great knurling, good for powerlifting, made in the USA, great price. French Sport has awesome customer service. If you tell them I sent you, they'll probably send you some sweet banners or something. Um, good bar. However, the one below that, this is probably, this is what we say is our top pick for the best Value powerlifting barbell. It's an excellent bar. This is the Rogue Ohio Power Bar. This is one of the most popular barbells in the entire world. It's also very cheap. You can get a bare steel version for about 265 bucks. This is the stainless steel version though because I'm extra in every way. It has uh, bronze bushings, chrome sleeves, stainless steel shaft, center neural, single neural marks. This one is stainless steel, I think is 200K tensile strength. It's stiff, it's 29 millimeters. Probably my favorite knurling on any barbell, except for maybe one down here, the Aleco, although it's different purposes. Love this bar. If you're looking for a barbell for your garage gym or your home gym, and you don't do a lot of Olympic lifts, the classic lifts, this is the one I suggest, without a doubt. This one, Vulcan Absolute Power Bar, version two, another great bar. I really, what I really like about this is they have a nice sharp or aggressive knurling, not as aggressive as the Ohio Power Bar, but then for the center knurl, they made it more passive. I love that feature. I would like it if all the bars had a more passive center knurl. You don't need a cheese grater on your back for it to stick. You just need something that's light enough to stick. The Cham Bar from Rogue is similar. Um, I love that feature. I like how they have the etching in the sleeves. Not a huge fan of the deep cuts on the sleeves, but I do like the etching. I like that, you know, it's just a good bar. It works well. I'm a fan of it. Next bar is the Vulcan Basic Bar. Um, another Vulcan bar. This one's similar to the American Barbell Bar. Uh, not much to say about it. It's just kind of a beater bar here. Rep Fitness Excalibur Bar. I know they're updating this. It's a good bar. Not a great bar, a good bar. Then we got the Rogue Ohio Bar. This is actually a custom one for garage gym reviews. Do you have one of these? Didn't think so. I do. I'm the only one in the world with this bar that says Garage Gym Reviews that I know of. I like this bar. I custom made it when I was at Rogue. I went through their factory. I wasn't allowed to show you any of that, but I did show you me making this beautiful thing on their computers. It's blue. It's got red composite bushings. It's got chrome sleeves. The Ohio, pa the Ohio bar is one of the best general training bars. This is another one that never gets used. It's just here to look pretty. Below that, we have the... This is the Longhorn Bar from Fringe Sport. This is the basically clone of the Duffalo Bar, which is an awesome bar. Both of these bars are great. This is a cheaper version of this. Is it as good as this? I don't think so, but it's a much better value because it's cheaper. 
Neuralink's great, Ben's great, very similar to the Duffalo bar. You can see that right here. It actually has the center, center neural mark as well. I mean, they basically just copied it, okay? Which uh, I could see how that would make you mad. However, at the same time for the consumer, they're like, ah, I just want a good price. I get it. Then the Duffalo bar, big fan of everything Kabuki makes. Probably one of my favorite companies right now. I mean, they just put so much thought into everything. They don't have a lot of products, but all the products they have are great. And I really like that. I like that attention to detail. This is the All-American Bar from Texas Power Bars. Uh, basically, all they did was they took the Texas Power Bar, put a more passive Neuralink on it, and called it the American Power, American, American, All-American Bar. And said it was a CrossFit bar. This is not a CrossFit bar. It's not that great for CrossFit. I don't think it is. It's 28 and a half millimeters. But I don't know. These sleeves are big. It just feels like a power bar still. It's the same tensile strength. Everything about it's the same as the power bar from Texas Power Bars, but it has a lighter knurling. I like it. I use it actually quite a bit, but I don't know. There's other bars I like better. This was actually my come up. This was the first bar I ever reviewed. This, I actually traded a Schwinn Airdyne that I got for like 10 bucks and I think an extra $100 bill to get this. And this is an Alico weightlifting training bar. This is a, a super expensive bar used in the Olympics. I love this bar. Super big fan of this bar. Um, nobody touches it but me. Actually, I had a buddy come over and lift the other day, and I found this bar in the rack. This was the only bar I said not to use, Micah, and you use this bar. Never use this bar again, okay? I'm serious. Don't use this bar. If you're watching this, you say you're a subscriber. I don't know if you are. True friends would be. The one below that, this is the bar I use the absolute most. This is the Kabuki Strength Power Bar. If somebody say, Cooper, you can only keep one barbell. What barbell would you keep? I'd keep the Aleko. But if I had a second bar to pick, what bar would you keep? This, uh, yeah, this is probably it. I'd probably keep this bar. This is the bar I like using the most. I use it for pretty much everything except for the power lifts. It's expensive, but man, Chris Duffin, you killed it with this bar. The Neuralink's amazing. It's just everything about it I'm a big fan of. It may be like a placebo effect because it's more expensive and you spend more, so therefore you like it more. I recognize those things, but either way, I love this bar. The one below that, very exclusive bar here. This is the Aleco collaboration with Rogue Fitness. You're thinking, Aleco, Rogue Fitness, they're direct competitors. When did they ever collaborate? Listen, I think there was maybe 300 of these made. There was a time when Rogue Fitness was not very big. They were coming up. They had sold a ton of Aleco bars. They used to sell a ton of Aleco bars on their website. They'd since phased them out. They now don't speak. They're competitors. They don't really like each other probably because Rogue took a lot of their market share. This bar is one that Rogue Fitness had exclusively made for Aleco. It's the only black Aleco bar ever made and I got one. I traded a different bar for it. Uh, somebody on the forums basically said, hey, I've got this bar, would you like to trade for it? I said, heck yeah, baby. It's not super beautiful. Uh, it's been used quite a bit, but I just like the history behind it. There's not a lot of them. Um, it's an Aleco bar, it works really well. Neuralink's great, everything about it's awesome. Um, but I've never seen them for sale anywhere else since. Then we have the Elite FTS SS Yoke. I talk about that one a lot. Big fan of specialty bars, um, yeah. I prefer the Titan Safety Squat Bar version 2 for the price. However, this is the original, um, you know, and I like Dave Tate. And so, you know, I bought that one. It's a good bar. Uh, below that is a beater bar. That's just a Cap Boss barbell. It's the cheapest bar on here. Uh, gets used the least, but if I'm going to do landmine work, I use it. Okay, follow me, and I have a couple more bars to show you. But wait, there's more. Okay, so right here, this is a football bar from American Barbell and T-Grip. This is a stupidly expensive bar. I don't, I'd only recommend this if you just have money to blow. Um, it works really well, but it was like 400, 500 bucks for a specialty bar. You, you can now get multi-grip bars from like Titan Fitness for, I don't know, under a hundred bucks, okay? I like that it's got the cutout, so I do overhead pressing with it. It's got, it's got the same sleeves that American Barbell uses on its like, $800 stainless steel Olympic bar on a multi-grip bar, okay? But it works really well. Neuralink's great. You can do curls with it. You can do presses with it. Um, you can do rows with it. It's about all you can do with it. Um, 
but I like to keep it here because it doesn't fit on my rack and uh, just looks cool. Then I've got these bad boys. Now, I typically only keep one um, of a type of specialty bar in here. Otherwise, I put them in my personal training gym. Um, but right now I have three trap bars in here. Uh, one, because we did a compendium of the best trap bar. You can find that, I'll put a link in the bio. Um, but I have the Kabuki Strength Trap Bar. It's a really you know, creative, unique name, the Kabuki Strength Trap Bar. I'm pretty sure that's all it's called. And then the Aleko Open Deadlift Bar. Or they told me I'm saying it incorrectly. It's supposed to be said like open or something like that. But I'm from the Midwest and probably a hit compared to a lot of you. So I call it the open deadlift bar. Although you spell it O with like two dots on top. Not sure what that's called. I don't even know how to find it on the keyboard. And then P-P-E-N. But I get asked, okay, Coop, you've got both these bars. Which one would you suggest to most people? The issue is they're different. This one's rackable. The Aleko's rackable. This one isn't rackable. This one only has one handles. This one has two handles. This one is more expensive before checkout, this one is a little bit less expensive after checkout when you include shipping. So they're very aligned in price. It depends on what you use it. If you're gonna use it in the rack a lot, if you're gonna do overhead pressing and those sorts of things, this one. If you're not, if you want the double handles, this one. They're both amazing bars. I love them. I love what Aleko did with this one. I love what Kabuki did with this one. I mean, I'd love to give you, an, you know, which one to get. And I do that with a lot of equipment. So I'm not just being biased here. They're just both good bars, okay? If you wanna know which bar I suggest, comment, maybe I'll tell you on your specific situation. Then lastly, I've got a Bells of Steel trap bar back there. I don't use that one that often because I've got these, but you know, it's a generally good trap bar. Um, and it's one of those bars that gets the job done, priced well, you know, if you're on a budget, it's a great bar, especially if you're in Canada. And uh, as far as bars go, that's about it. That's my bar rack. So if you're ever in the area, I'm not gonna tell you where I live, but if you're ever in the area, hit me up, come over, hang out, play with my bar rack. Um, but this is what we have here. Thanks for all the questions. And we're back. Lynn said the camera accidentally died. I think he actually just turned it off because he was tired of me talking. It's a very long video, but I have a lot to talk about. So I wanted to talk to you about it. Um, but I was just getting ready to do the ending. I was just getting ready to say, make sure you subscribe, make sure you comment. We're going to all this trouble to redo it, put a new card in there, all that sort of thing, just to say goodbye. That's how much we care about you. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace.